The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, hello everyone and welcome to uh, SHAD and uh, the first webinar. I'm getting ready to share my screen with you. which just seemed to be an option. Hmm. It worked so well last time. There we go. And I think you're seeing my beautiful flower and there comes the presentation. Excellent. All right. We're good to go. I just wanted to say hello and welcome to the first Robotics Canada Ask the Experts webinar. They are weekly webinars targeted to the FRC community and they're held every Tuesday at seven o'clock in the evening. Uh, you can watch for the links in the FRC Canada Team Blast that are going to be coming out more regularly as the season uh, builds. Uh, they're also up on the first Robotics Canada Facebook page, so that will be up uh, weekly. And you can look at the First Robotics Canada socials. They'll be up there. Uh, I am your moderator, Sarah Sills. I am a first senior mentor. Um, and my goal is to help you get the most from this event. So tonight, I'm going to be uh, joined by the guest expert, Jess Tang, from uh, SHAD. So I'm looking forward to hearing what she has to share with us tonight. Uh, all of you are entering the webinar on mute. And I recommend just to stay muted so that improves the audio quality for everyone else. Uh, if you have any questions at any time, just raise your hand, uh, you know, <laughs> electronically to be noticed or type your question in the question box, which uh, is on your side panel. And we'll try and take any questions during the uh, webinar. Um, in the future, we're trying to get other teams to be involved. We'd like to get as many of you as possible to present and share your experience. Uh, we know a lot of teams out there have a lot of amazing qualities that they can share. So uh, I, I know the information on how to sign up just went out in the last team blast. Um, so look, for, look over the topics available um, and go ahead and sign up for the ones you're interested in sharing. If there's a topic that you're super keen on presenting and it's not listed, then just please add it as a su suggestion and we'll try and get it worked in somewhere in the schedule. Um, generally, we have like a, a first topic and then some questions, a second topic. I kind of wrap it with an introduction at the beginning and a conclusion at the end. Um, so that's the general layout. So your presentation would probably be about 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe. Um, tonight it's a little different because we're giving all our time to Shad, um, but uh, in general that's the layout. Uh, I have a few news updates for you, so um, I'm going to start with those and then turn it over to Jess, and then at the end I'll just close. Uh, I wanted to remind you all about the Youth Summit. This is super exciting. It's brand new, and uh, we're encouraging two students per team to sign up for that um, so that you can, uh, you know, be inspired, share your voices, and, um, you know, feedback to your team uh, about the summit. So it's the first time they've done it, and um, they're going to, you know, have some guest speakers and group activities, panel discussions. It's up at the Kingbridge Center, which is near Canada's Wonderland, uh, and it's a full day event. Um, and there's the sign up link here. It also was in the Team Blast, and it's also on the website. So um, see if there's two people from your team who would like to sign up, um, and uh, go ahead and do that. Sounds really good. Uh, a couple of things just about teams. So by now, you your team should have signed up for their first and their second event. So you know this is part of your you know, initial payment. You get two events, so you should know where you're going and can start planning for that. Uh, some of you might choose to do a third event, and that has opened now, so you can go ahead and sign up for that. Um, and just so you know that on, this, on November 7th, I think is the date, that it opens to other people. 
So um, those, uh, you know, people outside of Ontario. So those extra spots might fill up. So if you are considering an event, I would suggest signing up soon. Um, Carlton is a new event. You might not know about it, but um, I know there's still some space there. And that'd be cool. I, I've heard a lot of good things about it. So consider that one. Um, another thing is the kickoff. Uh, you should be signed up for your kickoff, which one you're going to. That helps First Canada know where to get your kit of parts delivered to. So, and that takes time. So you should be signed up. There's of, of 178 FRC teams, all except for, you know, maybe 30 of you have signed up for kickoff. So uh, if you're one of those 30, do that now so we can get uh, make sure your kit of parts gets there. Um, and coming soon will be a information about a surrogate pickup. So if you can't get to the location where your kit of parts is, you can have a friend or a sister team or someone else pick up that kit of parts for you as long as you make prior arrangements. So watch for that form so you can um, organize that. And the last thing, just to just have a look at that beautiful logo of the Ontario Provincial Championship. The dates are finalized. It's at the Paramount Fine Food Center, which I still call the Hershey Center, uh, but that location at Rose Cherry uh, Place. So you can, you know, kind of put that on your calendar and start dreaming of that event. Uh, just to remind you of Hobbin's homework that we're doing, um, we're trying to get uh, be able to communicate a little better. So uh, one of the ideas is that each uh, team should uh, have a team communication officer. So we're recommending uh, a standard format, which will just help us because then we know like we're sending an email to FRC and then your team number. So FRC1241 uh, at gmail.com. And uh, then there would be somebody on your team who would be checking that uh, Gmail. Um, so there is a link here on this uh, site. It was also in your uh, team blast. So you can let first know once that's good to go and we'll start sending the team blast to that email as well. So um, you'll be more in the know, just kind of help spread that information. So I think that's all I have from me. I would like to uh, introduce Jess Tang to you. So she is the Outreach and Partnership Lead for SHAD, and she's also the Program Director for SHAD UBC. Uh, I know Jess Tang, and she is passionate about enabling the growth and leadership potential of high school youth. She's here to talk, she's here today to talk to you about SHAD, an enrichment opportunity for go-getter students in grades 10 and 11. So bear with us for a second while we change presenters, because so, we want to get her slides up. So I'm going to give control over to her, and she'll be able to take over and talk to you. Awesome. Thank you so much for that wonderful intro, and hello everyone in uh, the first community. I am really excited to, to share with you an opportunity known as SHAD. And why I'm so excited to share this is because when I was in your shoes in high school, I actually went through the SHAD program. I went through the SHAD program when I was in high school and it completely changed my life. Um, so much so that after I graduated university, I started working full time for the organization. And my job is to go across the country uh, giving presentations just like this one to ensure students from all across Canada have the same experience, have the same opportunity that I did. Because if you don't know about it, you can't apply. And I would hate for any of you um, out there within the first community to miss out on SHAD simply because you had no idea that we existed. Uh, so uh, as mentioned, my name is Jess. Uh, when I was in high school, I was involved in a lot of different things. I was a musician. I played drums and guitar. I spent about 90% of my time playing sports. And then I was also in my school's academic and rich program known as IB. <laughs> so in high school, I never really knew where I fit in. Um, I kind of had my like artsy musician friends that I played music with. I had my teammates who played sports with me that I spent a ton of my time with. And then I had my super nerdy academic friends who were in the IB program with me. But it wasn't until I went to SHAD that I met go-getter students who were just as diverse in their interests as I was. And it wasn't until I, I went to SHAD that I felt like I found like-minded peers to me. And it wasn't until I went to SHAD 
that I met role models and adults who were able to say to me, hey, you don't have to choose uh, one of these things. You don't have to just be the musician or just be the jock uh, or just be the nerdy kid. You can be all of these things. And we're going to give you experiences and resources so you can really feel empowered to figure out how to use all these seemingly diverse interests to really make an impact on the things that matter the most to you. So that's what I really got out of the SHAD program. But uh, what is SHAD? Uh, first and foremost, we are a summer enrichment program where go-getter high school students, that's you guys, get to spend the entire month of July living and learning at one of our host university campuses outside uh, across Canada. So you live away from home for a month at a university and then every single day for 27 days straight, we are giving you hands-on experiential learning in areas of STEAM, entrepreneurship, business, and leadership. Uh, so really everything that a university can offer. So it's a chance to meet like-minded peers, get hands-on experiential learning, as well as make lifelong friendships with students from all across Canada. Um, I know as, as first robotic students, uh, part of the excitement is being able to go to these competitions and meet peer, your um, like-minded students from across uh, your area. Uh, SHAD is very similar in that regard in that you'll meet go-getter students from across the country, from rural Newfoundland, town of 600 people, all the way to downtown Vancouver, town of many, many people, and everywhere in between. And ultimately, what we do is, we, all of our program is centered around empowering youth to make the world a better place so, that, place, so that you leave with the confident skills and resources you need to go make an impact in the things that matter the most to you. In terms of the experience, 27 days away from home, what does that look like? Uh, first and foremost, hands-on learning. Um, it's learning in a way that high school can't offer you. It is very different from high school. It is learning in a way that's experiential uh, as well as, as really hands-on in terms of it's a project-based, it's workshop-based, it's lab-based. Um, it's also a community of diverse and engaged change makers. Like I said, you're going to meet like-minded peers from all across Canada and build a tightly knit community with them. And then thirdly, it is a university campus environment. So what that means is you're going to experience what it's like to live in a residence dorm room. So you're gonna live in first year dorm rooms, get that experience of dorm room life. You'll you know, eat cafeteria food for a month and learn how to do your own laundry while you're away from home. So it's a chance to get a taste of university while you're still in high school. And finally, it is social, cultural and recreational activities. Um, all, all within the 27 days. So that all together makes the 27 day Shad magic and experience. But what does a typical day at Shad look like? First and foremost, if I can get my slide to change. First and foremost, it is hands-on learning through lectures, workshops, and labs um, in areas of STEAM and entrepreneurship. Um, it is intentionally diverse, and because you are at a university environment, you're going to be able to use the, um, the resources and professors found within that university. So you'll do things like hands-on robotics, you'll do things like get to use and learn, um, get to learn, use, uh, you know, re medical research equipment and meet professors and industry experts who are doing cutting edge research uh, in, their, in, in a wide diversity of fields. So you get to do things like look through a $3 million microscope, uh, use hands-on equipment in areas of um, all areas of study. It is intentionally diverse. So it's not like you come to Shad to just do the robotics workshops or just do the science workshops. You are going to do everything. So what that looks like, a typical day at Shad could look like this. Wake up, go to breakfast. First morning lecture is a lecture on uh, microbiology by a renowned um, scientist at the university. Straight from that into a lecture on marketing and branding from a former VP of Disneyland. Straight from that to lunch and then after lunch do a hands-on robotics workshop where you're coding uh, and building uh, robots. Straight from that onto a bus to the nearest hospital where you're doing a full afternoon of medical research labs alongside current medical researchers. Straight from that back to campus to do a contemporary dance workshop. That is a typical day at SHAD. Then you wake up all over again, and then you do it all, all over again in totally other er different areas of uh, academic study. Um, so we've had a lot of SHAD say to us, hey, before SHAD, I thought I knew I wanted to go into science. Now after SHAD, I know I want to go into business. Or we've had SHAD say to us, hey, before SHAD, I had no idea what I wanted to do post high school. Now 
I'm more confused than ever because I loved everything that we did in the program. Both are valuable learning experiences. At the end of the day, you're going to get a diverse look at a ton of different academic disciplines and job uh, career opportunities. But SHAD is not just nerd camp. We are a chance to explore Canada. We place students in campuses that are outside their hometown. Uh, and so we will also do excursions where you get to explore the city where your host campuses, campus is located in. So you'll do things like go on hikes, you'll do an overnight camping weekend, and then you'll get to do a lot of social and cultural sightseeing in that host city. So for example, if you are at UBC with me out in Vancouver, so I run the program at UBC every July, uh, one of the excursions we do is a nine kilometer hike up a mountain. So you climb up a mountain, nine kilometers up with your fellow shads, uh, and then we summit to this beautiful glacier fed lake. Um, so that's a really big jaw drop moment for many of our shads. Uh, within it, you'll also do an overnight camping trip during the weekend. So this photo here on the bottom is a photo that was taken this past July. That's me on the guitar. We've got songbooks out. Uh, everyone is singing. We have campfire. We have s'mores. It's a unique bonding experience. Beyond the nature, you'll also get to do a lot of uh, city sightseeing. So for example, uh, if you are at a McGill campus out in Montreal, We'll take, you to for, we'll take you to go shopping in downtown Montreal, then we'll go take you to eat poutine and Montreal bagels. If you're in PEI, we'll take you to go see the beautiful PEI beaches, and then you get to um, go watch the Anna Green Gables play, and then we'll take you for a full Atlantic lobster dinner. So it's a chance not just to, to learn, but it's an opportunity to explore and travel Canada in a way that you might never have uh, done so before. I've been running the program at UBC for the past seven years, and within my job now as the outreach uh, lead, I travel all across the country. And I'm always meeting alumni, and they always say to me, Shad was transformative, it was life-changing. And when I ask them what was the best part of their Shad experience, they all say to me, the people they met. They don't necessarily remember all the lectures or the workshops, but they absolutely remember the friendships that they made. Uh, so what that, uh, what that looks like is uh, everything we do within Shad, is centered around this value of community. We want to build an inclusive and safe community where everyone can show up and be their authentic selves. And when we do that, this is a breeding ground for really strong, genuine connections to be formed among the Shads. I've been running the program at UBC for the past seven years. And every year without fail, this happens. On the last day of the program, we're trying to get the Shads onto the bus to go to the airport. Without fail, all 52 shads, it doesn't matter if they're grade 10 or 11 or where they're from, all 52 shads are uncontrollably ugly crying because they don't want to get on the bus to go to the airport. It takes us literally an hour of them hugging and crying before we can get them onto the bus to go to the airport. And so that speaks volumes to the kinds of friendships that you will make at Shad. Uh, they, they genuinely are true friendships. Uh, and when I travel across the country, meeting Shad alumni from across the country, they always say to me, hey, it's been three, four, five years since my Shad experience. I'm still in touch with my Shad friends to this day. Our group chat is still crazy active. Everything we do at Shad is learning for the sake of learning. So there's no tests, there's no quizzes, there's no homework. However, one avenue for which we give you to apply your learning is through our real world design challenge. A real world design challenge is our way of saying, hey Shads, you are go-getters, you are uh, leaders in your field and you're change makers and you're leaders of today. And so we want you to solve interesting problems. And so every year we give the Shads a big problem facing Canada and we say, please go solve this. And what you're gonna do and how you're gonna solve it is we're gonna put you into teams of eight to 10. And then within your team, you're gonna work together to come up with a novel business idea, product or solution. And your deliverables are, number one, a fully written business plan, a working prototype, and finally, a presentation pitch to a panel of judges, Dragon's Den style. So what you're going to get out of that is number one, access to professionals, uh, CEOs, entrepreneurs who are going to teach you everything you need to know about taking an idea to market and bringing it to life. So you learn a ton of different business skills, entrepreneurship skills through that experience. Secondly, we're gonna bring you into workshops where you can learn how to prototype and build. So you'll get to use things like 3D printers, soldering irons, different tools, uh, learn how to code, so that by the end of it, you're gonna build a physical working prototype of your idea. 
Finally, we're gonna give you access to presentation coaches, pr uh, presentation uh, public speaking training so that you can give a effective pitch to a panel of judges, Dragon's Den style at the end of the program. So what you get out of this real world design challenge is number one, business skills. Secondly, engineering prototyping skills. And then finally, public speaking experience. So all of that is wrapped into this challenge. We've had a, many of our alumni say to us, I never considered business beforehand, but after Shad, many years later, I went on to start my own business thanks to what I learned in the program. This includes Michelle Romano, who is a dragon on CBC's Dragon's Den. She went through the program in 2003 when she was in high school, and she says in interviews all the time, I wouldn't be here today without the help of Shad. Finally, uh, why should you do Shad? It's a chance to get outside your comfort zone. It is an ambitious month, okay? Our programming for 27 days starts at 7.30 a.m. and goes right until 10 p.m. And there's programming scheduled every hour of that, of that um, during that schedule. And the idea is we're gonna pelt you with so much different workshops and labs and activities and challenges so that you are constantly being pushed outside your comfort zone. And when you do that for 27 days, you ultimately what will happen is that you're going to come home braver, more confident, more courageous, and with the skills that you need to go make an impact in the things that matter the most to you. So we've had students uh, step outside the comfort zone, conquer their fears during the program, whether it's they conquer their fear of performing and they share musical talents to the group, or they conquer their fear of public speaking and gave a really passionate talk to the group about something that means something to them, or they conquer their fear of heights and complete a high ropes course, they code their first line of code, or they go on a hike or camping for the first time. Regardless of what fear it is, you can guarantee that you will step outside your comfort zone and you'll come back a lot more confident uh, and ready to take on the things that matter the most to you. Okay, so July 5th, 2020, you can be jumping on a plane, train, or automobile to go to any one of these 19 university campuses. How our campus selections work is that when you are putting in your application, you rank these uh, by your preference. So if you say, oh my God, I've never been to PEI before, I really wanna go experience PEI, you can write UPEI as your first choice campus, and then you can rank the others uh, accordingly after that. We always try to place students in one of the top uh, six, if not top 12 choices, and what we always ascertain is two things. Number one, you don't go to the campus closest to your hometown. So if you live in Vancouver, you won't go to UBC. And secondly, we always make sure students from the same school don't go to the same program. So you're meeting completely new people and you're exploring a completely new city uh, and everyone at your Shad campus is in the same boat. Why should you do Shad? Simply put, it's amazing, it's life-changing, it's transformative. If you love FIRST Robotics, you will absolutely love Shad. It is everything that FIRST Robotics has plus like on steroids for four weeks long. So you're gonna get the hands-on learning and robotics and STEAM experience. You're gonna get access to like-minded uh, like peers and you're gonna get a chance to travel. Finally, um, for those of you um, thinking ahead beyond high school, uh, an added bonus of going to SHAD is an opportunity to give yourself an advantage and leg up when it comes to university, um, university applications and scholarship applications. All major universities have said to us, when, we're, uh, when, a, when a kid puts that they went to SHAD on their university application, we automatically bump them to the top of the pile. I know of two universities specifically, who, two major ones who asked specifically in their application, did you go to SHAD, yes or no? We also know that there are three main scholarship providers in Canada that provide the 80 to $100,000 scholarship. All three of them have said to us, when we are doing our, um, when we are reading through applications, we're always specifically looking for SHADs. Uh, so it does have that name recognition for universities as well as scholarship opportunities. Okay, who should apply? Any, of, uh, any first robotics student who's interested and in grade 10 or 11. Uh, it is a competitive application process. You do have to apply to get in and not all who apply get in. We are looking for three main characteristics in successful applicants. Number one, we're looking for students, students who are well-rounded in their interests and activities. Uh, so we're, we're looking for students who are pursuing excellence in something, whether that's robotics, music, art, sports, drama, student council, debate, science fair, anything really. We don't really care what it is as long as you are out there demonstrating that you are a go-getter and you're pursuing excellence in something. Secondly, we're looking for students who are open-minded and love learning for the sake of learning. 
So I'm going to throw you into what is essentially nerd camp for the summer. I want to know that you want to be there. You're going to be coachable and open-minded, and you're going to want to learn from diverse speakers and appreciate the opportunity to learn from these diverse speakers. Lastly, we're looking for students who are engaged and involved in their school or communities. So we're looking for students who care about the community that they're part of, whether that means you volunteer in your community, you volunteer in your school, you're part of school clubs, uh, you give back to the communities that you work and are a part of, okay? So if you're engaged, you're open-minded, and you're well-rounded in your interests, you're the kind of student that we are looking for. And we know that first robotic students definitely uh, fit this bill quite nicely. Um, there's a lot of overlap there. Right, so if you want to go to SHAD 2020, you need to put in an application by November 18th. So you have a little bit, uh, just under two weeks to get your application in. It is a four part application, which is why I recommend getting started ASAP on this. Firstly, the application entails a personal profile that is simply a outline and list of your experiences and involvement. So any school clubs, any awards you've won, any involvements that you're currently in. So very, very simple then the bulk of the application is going to be a series of short personal essays. These essays are our way of getting to know you on a deeper level and a more authentic way. We wanna hear a little bit more about the um, experiences that have been meaningful to you, why they've been meaningful, um, and the impact that it's had on you. So we wanna demonstrate, we want to see your self-awareness and self-reflection demonstrated in these essays. So if First Robotics has had a big impact on you, if you've learned a lot from it, talk about that in your personal essays. Thirdly, we ask for your academic transcripts, AKA your grades. Uh, it is less so about your grades and more so about your personal essays, okay? Um, and so there's no great necessary grade cutoff. We are just looking for a strong academic background, but really what it comes down to that we evaluate you on mostly is your personal essays, okay? And finally, a letter of reference from a teacher in your school. So November 18th is coming up soon. Give your teachers at least two weeks notice that you want them to write Nice things about you in a letter of reference, ask them now so they can have enough time to put this into their schedule and do you justice in a letter of reference, okay? So all of this is done online, chad.ca slash apply, and it's all due by November 18th. Lastly, there is what is known as op an optional piece to the application known as the creative demo. This is optional. However, if you are serious about wanting to get into Shad, don't leave this optional. It will help your application stand out. The creative demo is our way of saying, is there anything else you want us to know about you? Tell us in whatever creative way that you want. So we've had students send us videos of them talking to the camera, videos of them playing music, game tape of them playing sports, photo collages of their extracurriculars or their photo portfolio if they're really into photography, art that they've scanned, um, their art portfolio that they've scanned in of art that they've you know, drawn or painted. I've had lines of code that they've written or apps that they've built links to that, uh, SoundCloud links of their, their music or scores of music that they've composed, really anything. It is intentionally open-ended. It is your way to flex your creativity. So that is optional. But again, if you want your application to stand out, don't leave it optional. Take the creative demo. It adds another dimension to your application and it really brings your essays to life. Finally, uh, as FIRST Robotics students, you are eligible to win one of two um, scholarships that are available exclusively to FIRST Robotics students. Uh, so in the chat application, there's a question that says, are you in FIRST Robotics? Click yes, write down your FIRST Robotics team name, and then you'll automatically be considered for uh, one of two full funded scholarships. So we've been running this scholarship program for the last three years. Uh, and have awarded first robotic students these scholarships where they've been able to attend um, on a fully funded scholarship, okay? So it is in your benefits. Uh, it's definitely in your best interest to apply because you never know what happens. Uh, for those who don't win the scholarship though, uh, and who might need financial support, there is financial support available. So I wanna make sure all of you know this because I give this presentation all across the country. And what typically happens is students get really hyped about the program, they can't wait, and then they go onto our program website, they see the price tag, they scream, they close the laptop, and they run away. Don't run away because the next sentence literally says that financial assistance is available. What that means is if your family cannot afford the full program fee, not to worry, we will meet you where you're at and give you financial aid in the amount that makes this accessible to you and your family. Last year, we provided over $1 million worth of bursaries to ensure that deserving students 
who got accepted into the program, but who otherwise couldn't afford it, we made sure that they were still able to go, okay? So the bottom line is, don't let the cost of the program be the reason you don't apply. If you are interested in going to SHAD, the first step is to just apply. And there's a separate bursary application uh, that you can submit later. Bottom line, don't let the cost of the program be the reason you don't apply. Apply anyways, and then we can figure out the bursary allocation afterwards. That is it from me. Um, if you want to learn more, shad.ca is where you'll find everything, including the application process. Uh, our dates for 2020, July 5th to the 30th. And of course, if you want to learn more, follow us on Instagram uh, at Shad Program. Uh, I'm going to open up the floor to questions. If you want, you can either throw it into the chat there and I can answer it, or um, you can unmute yourself and just start talking. That's fine too. Uh, before, we, yeah, so feel free to ask questions, type them in uh, if you have any. I do have a few questions for you, Jess, that have come in a, our question box. So one of them awesome. is the scholarship application. Um, can mm -hmm. you just kind of talk a little bit more about that? And are there any tips for that or, um, you know, a, a way to stand out in that area? Yeah. Um, so the the app it's very very simple in terms of applying for the scholarship um uh like first and foremost all it, all it is is just click the box that says are you in first robotics click yes and then write your your frc team number that's how we make sure we can find you um and then from that we pull all of the frc um apps um or they we rank all the the applications in general and then once we have our acceptances we kind of take a look and see if there's any that stand out from the first robotics specifically uh like pool um and choose a scholarship there what we're really looking for um again are the same qualities that we look for in chat applicants um so are you enthusiastic are you a go-getter are you out there pursuing excellence and then of course because it is the first robotics specific scholarship um we're seeing um what has your involvement in first really meant to you. So if you can really reflect on that in your essays, um, that's something that will definitely help your case to say, you know, why is first robotics meaningful for you? You know, what have you learned from it? And, and what do you want to use? How is, what has that, what opportunities has that enabled for you uh, in your life? Okay, so it sounds like one of their personal essays for sure should, should relate to first. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, that sounds great. Thanks for that. Uh, another question is about accessibility issues. So if there are accessibility or health issues, um, is the program still possible? Absolutely. And thank you for whoever asked that question. That is a great question. Um, it is still accessible. Um, as long as the student is communicative to us with what they need in terms of accommodation. Okay, so we've had a, a whole diversity of students come to SHAD and diversity is absolutely one of our values as well as and we are very focused on making sure our program is accessible to diverse youth um, so whether that is anything that can range from dietary restrictions or other accommodations that you might need um, medically or otherwise that in order for you to be able to participate there is a uh, a form that we give out to shads when we put out our acceptances that is a medical form that is your place to write um, any accommodations that you might need from us uh, it's important that you fill that out so that in advance of, of you showing up to the program, we can make those accommodations and work with you to find the accommodation fit that that uh, that allows you to be able to participate fully in the program. That sounds really good. And one final question was the personal pro profile. Is that like a resume? Um, kind of. It is. Uh, there's a specific format to it when you go into the online portal and start your app. So it asks you to format in a very within the application it's not just an upload of your resume but it's very similar in terms of it's a list of kind of your accomplishments uh in different areas so we'll have a section that says like music and arts please list any involvements you've had in that uh sports music um volunteer work school school academic awards so um it's just a it's very much a listing of of stuff that you've done and accomplishments that you want to highlight so we can get a better read of all the stuff that you've done um, within the past few years. Okay, that, that makes that a little more clear as well. Um, mm -hmm. Excellent. I, I really liked um, the entrepreneur angle and how that brings 
um, kind of the steam stem aspect to to life with a real life you know that link to a real life problem and as a teacher watching students come back from shad they are super uh, excited about what they've uh, been able to accomplish both about their project and as you commented with the friends and the camaraderie and community that was built. So um, watching students come back for it, I, I've definitely seen that kind of change. That's fantastic. Yeah, I recommend it. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna change presenter back for me unless there yeah. are any final questions, I don't see any more. So I'm gonna uh, switch back to me um, and I'm going to, oh, there's my flower again that's good there we go um, and before I say my special good thank you to Jess I want to just remind you that the Stemley Cup is coming up on November 9th and 10th so that's this coming weekend it's in the Hamilton area um, you can find information about where and and timing on the First Canada website. Um, but, you know, consider dropping by just to see the game played if you've never seen it or, you know, kind of uh, cheer on some friends or, um, you know, understand more about the program if you haven't been involved. So if you're in that area, I highly recommend either day just to drop by and, and kind of check it out. Um, so that's pretty much all we have for today. I wanted to say a special thank you for to Jess for making time to talk with us. I think I really see that synergy between first students and shad students, and I think it's a real way to amp your your learning. So I appreciate you sharing the information and helping students know how to how to get involved and access that. I think it's really critical to note that that date, November nineteenth, is coming up fast. So um, if it sounds good, you should just uh, get started right away, I would recommend. Um, so thanks again, Jess, for, for coming today. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Next week, um, there's a, a presentation on ED&I. So speaking of diversity and inclusion, equality, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that in the first program and how important that is. We're hoping to get some information about the grandfather teachings, which is part of the First Nations community, and how that links to FIRST, which um, I've personally seen a presentation about this. It was really interesting and impressive and amazing. So I'm hoping to share that with the FIRST community so you can join us next week and um, hear more about that. And I think that's it. These uh, webinars go up on YouTube, so you can look at the FIRST Robotics Canada YouTube channel, and there's a playlist for this year's Ask the Expert webinar. Um, all the past webinars are up there as well, but then you can view them at your leisure. So thanks again for joining us, and uh, goodbye for this week.